Hey guys, James here. Now today I wanted to give you a sneak peek inside one of the bonus videos that I will be releasing as part of my book launch. What I've done is filmed a huge number of video breakdowns where I dissect and deconstruct all of the seductions that happen in my book, showing you how my mindset's working, what mistakes I'm making, what uh, things I'm doing correctly, and how this is working into my overall evolution as a man and a seducer. So in this short clip here, I start to investigate and learn to embody the archetype of the bad boy whilst not being actually a bad boy really at all being quite nice so i hope you enjoy the video check it out i've just met a girl named maria and suddenly that name will never be the same to me maria i just met a girl named maria so in the story i met this girl maria uh, when I was out with Wolf, who was my uh, wing at the time. And due to the fact that I was just too busy with other girls, I didn't follow up the, the number as I should. So what I did do, which is something that we started doing early on, was sending out mass texts to flaky girls or girls that we hadn't contacted. Um, because often this elicited a reply. So in my case, because I had a band, I was I, what I would do was just... Uh, you know, any time I had a gig, I'd send a message out saying, hey there, uh, make sure you come, blah, 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 blah. So it looked like it was kind of personal, but it was sent to many people. And you can do this with girls that have flaked. Now, often when a girl flakes, she just disappears forever. That's typically what does happen. But also, you need to think about often, why is the reason that a girl flakes in the first place? Sometimes it's because you didn't have a good connection and she's not interested in seeing you again. Sorry, that's just the reality. But many other times... She flakes because something else happens in her life. So she met you, she liked you, but then she gets back together with her old boyfriend. Or suddenly she goes overseas, or she loses a phone or something. Um, or she's really busy with her studies. And so the girl you know, gets the message and thinks, oh yeah, I'll reply to him, and she doesn't, and then things just pass and, and she forgets about it. So dead numbers are not necessarily always dead. Now I wouldn't suggest individually following every girl up month after month, but if you can send out a general text message inviting a girl to something, then every now and then, a girl who's she's just, then it's four months later and then she's broken up with that boyfriend, she's single, she's horny and she gets a text from this guy and she's like, oh yeah, I remember him, he was cute. Yeah, fuck it, why not? Um, so you wanna maximize your percentages in all things in seduction, so you may as well do this. So I suggest once a month uh, organizing something. It can be as simple as a bike ride in the park or uh, you and a friend are going rock climbing or you're just meeting for a drinks on Thursday night at some tiki bar or something. It doesn't have to be anything particularly special. It's just a general invitation. And you'll be surprised that every now and then, a girl will just pop up and go, sure, and she'll rock up and you can continue from where you left off, which is what happened in this case. So, the thing about this girl is she was a really good girl. Right? Good in the sense that she was quite conservative, she was working as an accountant and bought her own house at 23, she lived in the suburbs with her parents, she was a very sensible girl. And what I deliberately did was polarize her position and my position to play the good girl, bad girl, bad boy um, paradigm. And this is something that ties in with general role playing. Anytime you have set up a role play, you have somebody who is in a higher status, someone in a lower status, someone who is funny and someone who is straight. And in this case, someone who is good and someone who is bad. It was to my advantage to be the bad boy in her life. Because her life was so good, because it was so predictable, because she was always doing th the things she was supposed to do, um, she was itching for some release, some way to have an outlet to go and express the wilder side of herself, which she had inside her, as all women do. Please note this, no matter how good you think she is, there's a part of her that wants to go wild, wants to go crazy, wants to let loose, wants to experience uh, sensations and emotions and good sex with bad boys. So when she accused me originally of being a bad boy, I, I happily played into that. And, and many guys, if they're ever accused of being a player or accused of being a bad boy, they immediately try to justify, oh no, I'm a nice guy. Don't do that, please. Don't do that. You've been a nice guy all your fucking life and what has that done for you? Not much, right? So when you get the chance, be the bad boy. So what happened was she didn't actually come to the gig. She stood me up. Stood me up. I mean, I, I was busy with other things, but what I did here was I created an arbitrary debt, right? So, and you can do this any time a girl flakes on you or is late or cancels at the last minute, is you can 
then tell her that she owes you something. Because what does a nice guy do? If, if a girl flakes on him or she's late or she's disrespectful or she you know, f changes the plans all the time, he just accepts it and he's like, oh, that's fine. And then he tries again because he's really from coming from a position of scarcity and trying to please her. So if she's done something that's actually not cool, not respectful, he will forgive it and let it slide every time. And this, of course, just encourages her to do the same thing in the future and tells her, okay, this is not a man that I need to show much respect to because he doesn't really respect himself. So anytime a girl does any of these things, which are perfectly normal, people cancel, people flake, people change times, but what I'll do is I'll then say, all right, will you owe me something in the future? So in this case, that's what I did. I sent her a message after she didn't turn up, said, not good enough, Maria, you'll have to take me to dinner to make it up to me. What? Girl taking a boy to dinner? That's outrageous. And I was really broke at the time and uh, we were living on lentils and pasta at home. So I was actually hoping she did. And she took me out for a nice steak, which I thoroughly enjoyed. So then at the end I said, and now I require a lift home. So I'm kind of flipping this paradigm where I'm getting her to do all the things the man is supposed to do um, because she kind of owes me, right? So if I just was ordering a girl around randomly like that, it wouldn't really make sense. But because I'd set up that little role play again where she broke, you know, broke our arrangement very tentatively, then she owed it. And she enjoyed playing that role because it gave her a reason to do these things and to play with different aspects of herself. She's, she's never taken a guy to dinner before. Um, you know, she's a good girl from the suburbs. If she ever went out on a dinner date, he was taking her out. So it's just something new and uh, a different experience. So you can play with those things. All these roles are flexible. You don't need to be rigidly attached to the, I am a man, therefore I do these man things, and she's a woman, does woman things. Mix it up a lot, and this creates a whole lot of different emotions for a woman that she doesn't usually get to experience. We then get home, and we're making out, and take her top off, and it's really steamy, but she has to get up at five in the morning because she has, starts work very early, and it's you know nearly 11, and I, I can sense that you know it's definitely going to happen. There's definitely a lot of tension here, um, but if I push it right now, it's probably just going to end up being something that maybe she would have done, but it just wouldn't have had as much you know, ease and smoothness to it. So don't be fixated to the idea that if you get a girl home, you must have sex with her that night. Um, Often a girl just needs a little bit more time and when she puts up her last minute resistance, often that's all it is. It's like she does want to be with you, she will sleep with you, but it's, you know, she needs it to go at a certain pace where she can enjoy it and build up to it and really feel relaxed as well as aroused and then let go. And quite often she needs more than one night. So in that moment I just had the intuition that, okay, if I just finish it off here, if I just like wrap it up, send her home, it's, gonna, it's, it's a done deal next time. And so that's what I did. You know, I said, okay, you've got work at 11, right? Uh, where she dropped me off. Work, well, she's got work tomorrow, she, your bedtime's at 11. I said, all right, we've got 17 minutes till then, you should come in. So we really did just go in, fool around for 20 minutes, and I said, all right, off you go. And um, sent her in the car, and off she went home. So then later in the week, what I started doing was setting up fantasy texting. So setting up, again, this role of her playing um, a good girl secretary because she went to work in an office and wore those office clothes, remembering back the reason I got into the seduction in the first place so was I could get these girls, the Russian models and chicks who worked in offices and glamour girls and all these people that weren't hippies. And so I played into that fantasy and I told her that she's going to come over dressed in her secretary outfit and then I actually explicitly told her what it would be and she said, oh, that sounds like trouble. And the, the nice guy would have said, oh, no, no trouble, just, you know, be friendly, something. And I said, you knew it was going to be trouble from the start. So I'm again playing this role of the bad boy that she want, is being seduced and being overpowered by this naughty boy. And that gets, allows her to play that role of being the ravished, being the seduced. Uh, so that's exactly what happened. She arrived dressed exactly as being requested. And this time there was no fussing around with any resistance or anything. She'd been obviously thinking about it that whole week when she's at a boring job, living her normal life, um, with that naughty boy in the center of the city waiting for her, so that when she finally had the chance to do it, of course, she came and did exactly what she wanted, um, and it was awesome. So please take note of that. Sometimes a little bit of restraint. You be the one to actually shut it down, stop the kiss, put her clothes back on, and send her out the door when uh, you can tell that she needs a bit more time. and. Also, to polarize things by playing these different roles. 
Gentlemen, James Marshall here with a very important announcement. I am finally, after 10 years, releasing my first ever book, which is going to be called A Natural History, The Seduction Journals of James Marshall. If you want to find out more about this and to be on the VIP advance list, then click the link to the side and to the below, put in your email, and I will be giving you lots of updates and behind the scenes exclusive material. Back in 2006, when I first started on this game of learning about seduction, personal development, lifestyle design, uh, I meticulously documented my experiences. So I kept journals through the two years from 2006 to 2008 when I was doing this all the time around the clock, going from a novice to becoming very, very good. And so in this book, you get to see me as I transform from being a guy who's just starting out cold approaching girls on the street trying to figure this out to at the end managing a harem of five girlfriends eventually finding the one girl that blows me away and sends me back to square one it's an awesome ride there's lots of uh, amazing adventures crazy seductions rock and roll mayhem uh, you get to be introduced to a whole range of characters that have influenced me mentors uh, and other guys who are great with seduction who actually are kind of underground figures now but certainly helped me to get to where I am today it's all in there, it's dirty, it's grimy, it's no hold barred. Uh, I reveal all my insecurities, all my triumphs, all my challenges. It's a great fun read. So if you're interested, put your email in the link below to find out more about uh, natural history. That's the journals of me as a dirty young man. See you soon. Why do you only call me when you're